All right, this is Mrs. Ulrich, and this is Chapter 17, Part 1, talking about the atomic nature of matter. So, atoms are the building blocks of most matter. Just like you can build a Lego set, and Legos are the building blocks, atoms are what build us, desks, lamps, whatever it is. Everything is made of atoms. So, every simple, complex, living or non-living substance is put together from a pantry. Imagine you walk into your pantry and there's only a hundred elements. Okay? So that's all it is. Every single thing around you, all of the different things that are made, only a hundred elements total. So like we said, atoms are our building blocks. Okay? And those atoms, there are different flavors of them, right? You go to Baskin Robbins, you get different flavors of ice cream. They're all ice cream, but they have different flavors. So our flavors are called elements. It's a material composed of only one kind of atom. All right, we know of 115 elements right now. 90 occur in nature, and the others are in a laboratory um, made with laboratory equipment. So 90 of the 115 are natural, the rest are synthetic. And more than 99% of the material is formed from only a dozen elements. So everything is formed from only 100, and 99% is only made of 12 different elements. So 12 different flavors. So what do all substances have in common? They are all made of atoms. Atoms are incredibly small. If we go back to this one, you can see if a typical atom were expanded to a diameter of three kilometers, that's the size of a, an airport, the nucleus would be the size of a basketball. So it's mostly empty space. Um, so it's a lot of empty space, but they're also super small. In a thimbleful, you know, a thimble is just, it's about the size of the tip of your pointer finger. There are 10 to the 23rd atoms in a thimble full of water. Hey, if you were to write out 10 to the 23rd, there are 23 zeros after the number 10. It is a huge number, just like we talked about the other day. Atoms are perpetually in motion. They never stop moving, so they move all around and all around. Solids, they don't move very much. They vibrate in place, but, you know, the solid in my desk isn't all of a sudden going to jump over and become a part of my textbook or a part of my glass of water. It's going to stay in the desk, but it'll move in its place. Now in liquids, in my glass of water, the atoms are consistently moving, shaking, changing where they're at. And in gases, they zoom all around all the time. They never stop moving. Okay, in um, a breath of air, there are as many atoms in a breath of air as there are breathfuls of air in the entire atmosphere. So 10 to the 23rd is a huge, 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 huge number. Right? So if you could breathe all the air in the world, you would have breathed about 10 to the 23rd, is my guess, um, breaths, because there's that many atoms in a normal breath of air. All right, atoms are so small, you cannot see them with our normal light. There are other ways to see them, um, but the reason is light is a wave and atoms are smaller than those wavelengths. So here's our little image here. You can see our boat um, and the waves going by. You see how here it's kind of a shadow where it's calmer? So as the waves go by, it shows you about the size of the boat, um, whereas here's the chain. Since these, this wavelength is um, larger than the width of the chain, you don't actually see a change here at all. And that is the same with atoms. Since atoms are a lot smaller than the wavelength of light, it doesn't really give you information if you're looking at them with visible light. So, how small are atoms? Itty, 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 bitty, right? And 10 to the 23rd is a huge, huge number. All right, atoms are recyclable. Right? We know what recycling means. You put it back into the system and it comes back out as something new. So atoms in your body have been around since creation. So since everything was formed, um, most of the atoms have been since then. Obviously we've got synthetic labs. However, 
Um, that would be called ex nihilo creation, which is creation from nothing. And you cannot create something out of nothing. I cannot make cookies appear out of thin air. I must have something to work with. So atoms are much older than any materials they compose. So even though if I have an antique piece of furniture, those atoms that make up that piece of furniture are significantly older than the furniture is itself. Same for us people, right? We're made up of atoms, but um, we're eventually going to be recycled. Our bodies will, anyway. Um, so they continue to be recycled, even our breaths, right? You inhale some, you exhale some, some of them become part of you, mix into your body with the oxygen in your bloodstream, things like that. Eventually they leave. People are made of um, the same atoms, generally speaking. So people forever and ever ago, we technically have their atoms in our bodies. Okay, think about this. World population grows each year. So does that mean the mass of the Earth increases each year? So if I add a new person, they're made up of a bunch of atoms. Are we adding to the mass of the Earth? No, we're not. Um, the mass changes due to interplanetary dust. However, more people just means more atoms are recycled. That's all it is. All right, think about this one. Does your brain contain atoms that were once part of Albert Einstein? Most likely, right? However, your um, atom that is on the tip of your point pointer finger and makes up your fingerprint was probably not the atom that was on the tip of Albert Einstein's finger and made up his fingerprint. You might have an oxygen atom from him that is now in your lungs, or who knows. So for how long have atoms been around? Since creation. And they continue to be recycled. Alright, finally, evidence for atoms. There's something called Brownian motion. It's named after a guy named Brown. And that's evidence that atoms exist. What it is, is that um, atoms move around, bump each other, and then that motion is what tells us there's something there. So they move around, they bump larger particles, right, that are larger than the wavelength of light, so we can see them, so we know that they're there. All right, so the idea that matter is made of atoms goes all the way back to 400 BC. That's a long time ago. Um, but it wasn't really developed until the 1800s by a guy named John Dalton, who said he did a bunch of chemistry and said, hey, I think everything's made of atoms. But he didn't really have evidence. That was just the conclusion that he drew. And then it wasn't until the 1900s that Albert Einstein did a lot of work and was able to prove that atoms did exist. There's also this person called Robert Brown in 1827, so around the same time as John Dalton. He was looking through a microscope at pollen grains in water, and he noticed that they were constantly moving, right? So pollen grains are super tiny anyway, but the atoms are even smaller. Um, but he noticed they kept moving, and he was wondering what that was, and he decided in the end, his conclusion was, since they continue to move, there must be something moving them and that's the atoms that are constantly in motion. Alright, some more evidence today. We have significantly better technology. Um, so, we can find things with an electron beam, so it doesn't use visible light. Um, then there's also all sorts of other ways to figure it out. Um, but so that electron beam has a tiny wavelength, so it'll show small objects. There's also a scanning tunneling microscope, which shows us individual atoms. So you can see right here, these are individual atoms. And you can actually see here, kind of the bond structure. That's what this blue is, connecting them. Those are the bonds between them. They share electrons there. Okay, so we're able to construct really good models of the atom and then make predictions about how they interact with the natural world. So how does Brownian motion provide evidence? Since atoms are in motion, they hit those larger molecules nearby, and they make a move, and so we know that something's there because it's jiggling.
So that is all for this video today, um, and we will do part two later this week.